Delighted to say we have the FWA chair, John Cross, with us because the Football Writers Association Footballers of the Year for 2023 are going to be announced right here. So go on, tell us the winners, please. Well, probably the least surprising result of all is Erling Haaland as the Footballer of the Year for, for the men's side. And then Sam Kerr on course, um, of course, to, to um, you know, potentially win the WSL again with Chelsea. Mm. Is the, is the is the winner again for a second year running? It's the first back to back um, ever in in, the, in that category. So congratulations to them both. What incredible winners! What amazing seasons they've both had. Yeah, Erling Haaland and Sam Kerr. Uh, let's let's start with with Sam. I mean, remind us of uh, her season and how did the voting go as well? Who else was was up there or thereabouts? Rachel Daly was second and Lauren James third, but um, Sam Kerr actually. Um, hold twice as many as a second place so um, you know a really comprehensive winner what a fantastic season she's had and I mean I, I do actually think I mean she's she's known for her, her, her goals her quality isn't she and basically just her influence there I mean what she's also a big game player that was such an important goal if you remember that one to to really pull the game back at, at the Emirates and she just does have this amazing habit of scoring wonderful goals but important goals big game player and um, really a deserved winner and you know I, I thought it was wonderful wasn't it last Saturday that she was chosen do you remember carrying the Australian yes. flag as an icon of Australian sport at the coronation which says to me everything you need to know about her as an ambassador for sport for her country and of course an ambassador for, for the women's game and Frank Kirby has actually won it twice before um, but she um, Sam Kerr is the first um, woman player to, to win it back to back so that tells you everything you need to know about her achievement yeah absolutely does and I'm sure her season will be topped off nicely with the way that WSL is going who knows knows where the title's going to go, Absolutely. but it's potentially going to Chelsea and that would round that off. So we'll look forward to seeing her hopefully collect her award in person. And I mean, goodness me, no surprises, is it, to see uh, the name of the winner of the men's award. I mean, what a special season that Erling Haaland has had. So it's a debut season that is going to go down in history. Um, yeah, it wasn't too hard a decision, was it? I'm sure overwhelming in terms of the votes. 82%, which wow. is the, the, the highest that we've had actually for a winner in the Premier League era, which says everything, doesn't it? Erling Haaland, I just think, has been supreme for Manchester City, breaking so many records. I mean, he's still, still got, he probably got Dixie Dean in his sights. He needs a few more for that, doesn't he? But basically, he's already overtaken anything post-war. I mean, I didn't actually think that Clive Allen, for example, who scored 49 goals in all competitions, if you remember for Spurs, 86-87, I, I didn't think that would be beaten, simply because the Premier League has now become so much, in a way, so much tougher, so much more intense, so much more challenging, I think, from a physical point of view as well. And I just think for Haaland to, to break all records, to mm. go through this incredible barrier of 50 goals, for, for example, still got the treble in his sights. Mm -hmm. It's in his first season. Nobody does this in their first season, in their debut season in the, in the Premier League. And I, th for, for, for one, think that basically that's what makes Haaland so special, so remarkable. I mean, he's a unique striker, amazing talent. And so young, with so much ahead of him as well. You kind of wonder what he's going to do next and will his name be on the trophy for more seasons to come, do you feel? Oh, absolutely. He's just got that within him. I just think when you make that sort of statement in your first year, I think that basically because of his age as well, there's yeah. so much more, I think, potential to come. I mean, look at that. I mean, the stats there are just remarkable. Six hat-tricks. Yeah. Not six not six goals <laughs> for, as, as hat-tricks. It's six hat-tricks. It's astonishing. Absolutely amazing. And I also th think, wow. Ali, as well, that, that basically as the season has gone on, I think he's become a better, all-encompassing player. Mm. And that's a tribute to, to not just him, but Manchester City and the supreme coach that Pep Guardiola is. Because I just think if you take, for example, that all-important, that almost the, the builders, the title decider against Arsenal, the two best players in the, on the pitch, in my mind, were Haaland and De Bruyne. And, and basically they were almost like a double act. So it's just, it's so unfair also to categorise him. He'll have quieter games, of course he will, but to categorise him just as a goal scorer. He's our footballer of the year because he is just the complete player as well. And I think that's developed as the season has gone on, which again is a tribute to his desire and determination and his brilliance. 
think we did wonder at the beginning of the season, you thought, oh, is he going to be a bit injury prone this season? Because that's happened in the past. You wonder, having not played in the Premier League, you wondered if he'd be able to keep up with the pace. There were a few questions, weren't there? Certainly at the beginning when you wondered about his overall game and what he was or maybe wasn't contributing. So when you take all that into consideration and what he has done and certainly silence any critics, is this the most impactful we've ever seen as, of, of, of a player where we didn't quite know what to expect? Yeah, I think other great players as well have taken almost that year to adapt, haven't they? Mm. You know, it's been an ad adaptation period because the English game can be so physical, can be so demanding, can be so different, I think. It's so intense. And I, I think that's what strikes me is even the greats like Thierry Henry, for example, or Didier Drogba, you know, basically, it, 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 they were better after their first season. And they really came into their own then, the, the, those sort of goal scorers. And that's the difference for me. Do you remember we had that brief spell, didn't we, where, we, where, the, where the debate was, yeah, but he's good, he's scoring goals, but does he take away, does he detract from City's overall team performances and, and, and their style? Well, I mean, he's answered it in the last couple of months. Mm. And I think it's really interesting that um, about a month or so ago, he was very, very tight to the player who's, who's ended up from finishing in second place, Bakayo Saka. And they were almost neck and neck. But it tells you everything about the last four to six weeks that, that uh, Haaland has polled all these votes. Everyone has basically staged up their votes. It's fantastic turnout, by the way, from the membership. Brilliant turnout, you know, really, really, really high. Better than you've ever seen in any general election. Yeah. And um, <laughs> just because people could see just the, the impact that Haaland has had on, on the Premier League and Manchester City. So you mentioned there, uh, was it Saka that took up the majority of the rest of the percentage? What other players were in the mix? Yeah, uh, Saka was second. Um, uh, Martin Odegaard, who's had such a great season as well, third. And then Kevin De Bruyne, um, you know, who, who for me, frankly, you could choose him as a winner any year could, to be Footballer of the Year, couldn't you? He's been fantastic. And Marcus Rashford, who, who I think has been uh, um, in fifth place, who I think has had a fantastic individual season, not just for Manchester United, but also, mm. I guess, for England at the World Cup. He really shone there, didn't he? And, and he's such a remarkable um, character and figurehead, you know, for, for the Premier League and English football. Yeah, well, one thing I wanted to ask about actually was uh, Erling Haaland and the type of person that he is. He doesn't seem to have this ego that have maybe come with other big names, making a big mark. As, as a football writer and as a journalist who vote, do, do we get the feeling that he's likeable, he's fun, and he's actually a really great role model? Yeah, he's definitely very forthright, isn't he? Mm. You know, he, he's, he, 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 he tells it how it is. He doesn't hold back in interviews. Mm. He's very direct um, and he's, he's, he's incredibly um, engaging and, um, you know, you, you want to listen to him. But you're right, I don't think he has that has that ego, does he? I don't, you know, I think he seems quite, you know, normal, down to earth. I quite, you know, it was really interesting, wasn't it? A fascinating interview, I think, that I saw last week with Jack Grealish, mm. saying that just Erling Haaland is so, um, just so committed and so um, single-minded and focused on recovery, training, ice baths. And yes. it was just, you know, that says it all, really. He's not interested in kind of you know, too much off the field. He's not interested in sort of partying. He's just determined to be the best footballer that he can be and just so focused on, on doing so well for Manchester City. Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell us about 2023 marking a very special anniversary for this uh, award as well. What, what about the significance of this? Yeah, well, we're very proud to say that it's the 75th year of, of, of this award and um, it dates back su such a, you know, such a long way. We've got such a proud history of fabulous winners. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, quite a few of them actually will attend the dinner um, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and it's, you know, it, it feels so special to have these two great winners in amongst that sort of, you know, that company, the, the likes of, you know, an Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker, a fantastic list of, of winners in the past. I mean, it's been wonderful, actually. We've, we've used quite a few sort of kind of short clips and, and films of social media on social media, just recalling their great times and sort of Teddy Sheringham was another, just recalling some, some fantastic memories and, and, and what they achieved. And when you look at those sort of kind of films, you know, and people looking back, John Barnes, you know, just you realise that this is a, you know, a cherished award, something we're incredibly proud of as, as football writers, as a collective, that they buy into it, that they're so proud to, to win it. And, um, we, you know, we're delighted to, um, you know, say that sort of Haaland and Sam Coe will be, you know, both be fully expecting to be at the awards to pick up the, their, their, their gongs on the night. Yeah, and let's hope they enjoy it, you enjoy it. And thank you very much for coming in and Pleasure. announcing the news. Thank you. Thank you.